My name is Alex Storch and I'm an Ansible Solutions Specialist. And today I'm gonna to provide an executive overview on how I can use Ansible to help reduce some of my cloud spend and provide additional value back to the business. Optimization is a crucial part of every organization, no matter what portion of the business I'm in. So that's no different than what we expect from IT organizations. Many IT organizations today have some sort of cloud spend with a lot looking at multi-cloud strategies in order to take the best benefits of each cloud provider. There are also on-prem environments and hybrid cloud environments that really help drive the business. As I look into that cloud spend, it oftentimes continues to grow because there are many benefits in terms of agility and some of those hosted cloud services that teams want to take advantage of. But no matter if I'm a small startup or I'm a Fortune 100 company, IT executives consistently say that they want to reduce that cloud spend. So they want the benefits that cloud provides while still doing the best to try to reduce some of it. So what does that typical spend look like? So whether I'm a large enterprise customer or I'm on the smaller end of the business spectrum, I can still see anywhere from 600,000 as the most common all the way up to $2.4 million. And if I even save 10% of that number, that's anywhere from 60,000 to $120,000 or $240,000 a year. That's significant savings that I can redirect to other IT projects, to hiring, to doing all kinds of other things rather than really in many ways, wasting that spend. So what can I do? What really needs to be done? Obviously there's plenty of self-admitted wasted spend that exists in our IT environments. Maybe it's a development instance that was spun up 30 days ago that no longer serves a purpose. That testing is done and that particular EC2 instance can be torn down. There are many policies that I can put in place to help optimize some of those costs. So whether it's right-sizing instances, whether it's eliminating storage that isn't used, or it's even starting to look at, let's make sure all of our instances are properly tagged so I can turn off workloads that I'm not using on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a lot of money that can be saved by really looking at what exists and removing what doesn't need to exist. So how does Ansible fit into this picture? Ansible can connect across all of the different major cloud providers. So whether I'm just in Azure today or I'm already in multiple cloud providers, I can use that to connect to those different providers, turn off every single development and test instance, as well as databases for 48 hours every single week and save two sevenths of the cost of those particular instance every single year. If I turn it off for more than 48 hours, that increases my overall savings. So a minimum of 28.5% annually if I turn off those instances just for 48 hours a week. If I go to those next steps and start removing completely untagged virtual machines or turning off virtual machines that don't have an owner associated with them, again, I can continue to increase that savings. Adding in some self-healing or self-remediation to right-sized instances if CPU usage or memory usage is low across a certain period of time, just again, adds to that overall savings. And I can use Ansible to tie in some of your existing processes and, and business rules through something like ServiceNow. So it really helps make better uses of your cloud instances as well as your on-premise environment. So some actual results that we've achieved with customers. So looking at just $50,000 a month in EC2 instance cloud spend, this customer is able to save over $170,000 every single year an additional $100,000 a year in RDS instances as well. So that's over $270,000 every single year that this company got back to use for additional IT projects, hiring, just better all management of their entire IT organization. So no matter what size your cloud spend is, you can see very direct results. And while when we started this project, it was just theoretical, the numbers backed up exactly what we were looking for as we actually implemented this capability. So what is that implementation? How does this actually work? So there are two different ways to look at it. I can look at an opt-in or opt-out mentality. So it really depends on how your organization operates and the culture that exists. So opt-in, I can have each individual team look at their virtual machines and their different environments and opt into the capability to turn them off on their own set schedule. So obviously each team may have their different work priorities, or maybe they're in a critical sprint that they have to work over the weekend, they can maintain their instances up during that period. Or I can shift to an opt out mentality, which means by default, every instance that reaches a certain tag gets turned off. 
and then the team seemed to opt out of that particular automation event for a certain number of days. So maybe they have a 30 day sprint that they're going through and they want to opt out for 30 days. I can leverage that particular uh, tag in a cloud provider to essentially exempt that instance from uh, the turnoff event. So this is a very simple way to just save money on the weekends for resources that aren't being utilized. So let's jump into a demonstration to show just how simple this can be. So to get started on a demonstration, I'm gonna use an existing business process that many companies have such as ServiceNow and that service catalog. So I can provide that capability for different users to turn off and turn on their instances and set their own schedules. So in this case, I wanna turn off my own instances in just a little bit and I'll have it turn on you know, at the end of the week, but I've got full capability set the exact date, time, how often these things turn on and off. So in this case, I wanna turn off my dev instances every single week and because of the fact that I'm logged in as myself, it will use that as the email and setting this up within the automation platform. So I've got full capability to adjust based on exactly what team needs to leverage this automation, as well as what environments they may or may not want to turn off. So I can see that this job is already running to create that scheduler and it's already finished. So I can see the two schedules that have been created that have my exact name and the exact environments that will be turned off. So this gives me full flexibility to turn off or turn on as many different environments as I want across many different users. I have it set so it's not tied to a specific tag. So if you have various tags that you leverage in terms of your environments, you have full flexibility to leverage that exactly as you need. But as this gets ready to start the process of turning off my instances, I wanna show the virtual machines that I have today. So I have three virtual machines in this environment all currently running. They all have different tags they have set up. So this one has the tag of myself and dev. So this is the one that I do want to turn off. I have another virtual machine that I also own, but it's in my test environment. And my last virtual machine, while also my development environment, is owned by someone else. So ideally, I only want to turn off this one virtual machine that has my tag as well as myself as the owner. That's it. So as you can see, this job has already started to turn off that virtual machine. And it's built that it checks everything at runtime. So it's not going through this process of caching information or only knowing you know, things that were a week old. As soon as this job runs, it checks the current state, in this case of Azure, to see exactly what virtual machines meet the requirements that I set. In this case, my tag and my uh, development environment. But what if I wanna have multiple schedules? So I could actually go back to that catalog and create a completely separate schedule, in this case, Maybe I'm a team that wants to not have my test environment up during the weekend. So our test engineers are only available Monday through Friday. So I actually want to turn off my test instances at eight o'clock on Friday and turn it back on, let's say eight in the morning on Monday. So give us plenty of time to get as much value as we can out of turning off these instances. And as I said, this is a weekly process. So I'll turn this off every single week and I'll order that now. Obviously, I don't want this to affect my existing schedule. I just want this to create a new schedule specifically for, again, myself as the owner, but for my test environment. So as you can see, the stop job has completed. So I can actually go back to my virtual machines, refresh, and see that instance is stopped. And I can also go into my schedules to see not only do I have that the dev environment, but also now have that test environment set up as well. And you can also see that this one, since the parking has completed, it's jumped to the next week. So this gives you very easy capability to see exactly what's going on. And I have that audit capability to see who is participating in my financial operations, because I can see the owners and the environments that are being turned off. And then I can very easily see in the output exactly which instances are being turned off through automation. So it gives you great capability as you look into how can I start trying to save on my cloud environment. So obviously we talked about other ways that I can provide policies to reduce my cloud spend as well. One of which can be right sizing instances. So in this case, there could be a flow similar to something like this, where I leverage an agent or a monitoring solution such as Prometheus or Dynatrace that checks for low CPU usage or low memory usage, and then either creates an incident or automatically remediates that particular issue. So I'm again, making the best use of my cloud spend and my cloud environment. Obviously, there may be lessons that you come up with as you go through this. We found a few. So if you do have a committed spend agreement with a cloud provider or reserved instances, you may dip below that threshold. 
So either you can exempt certain items to still utilize them or just accept that you may go below that threshold as you're going through this process. We also found that less weekend work was occurring in those development and test environments. And it wasn't that projects weren't getting done in the required time period. It just meant that they were more efficient during the week in order to get these jobs done. And because of the fact that the instances were turned off, we actually ran into fewer tickets on the weekends, which means fewer support personnel were involved and also fewer on-call resources were necessary in order to keep the IT operations running. Obviously, it was important for communication to exist throughout this process to make sure that there was buy-in and then provide the results as they went through this to show the efforts of trying to improve their financial operations really did have a significant impact on the bottom line. So while, again, it can be very easy to automate a lot of these processes, it's important to make sure there is buy-in from the major players. So thank you for taking the time out to learn a little bit more about how I can save some money on my cloud spend and really leverage Ansible to start managing some of these pieces. I know it can be a daunting task at times to try to provide the benefits of the agility of a cloud provider, but still maintain the business and reduce spend. Hopefully this gives you some ideas and please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.